Hey guys, today I want to talk about how to lose weight without tracking macros. Now, just to be clear, if you want to make a change to your physique, it usually is more efficient to be tracking because you can be a lot more precise. But tracking macros is not for everyone. I do have an entire video on whether or not you should or should not track macros, so I will link that down in the description box below. But in short, tracking macros can be incredibly educational. You can learn what is in your food. You can learn what foods give you more energy or maybe take away energy, what foods make you bloated, what foods make you have better performance in the gym. But for some people, tracking macros can be very, very damaging mentally and can lead to a bad relationship with food. So if you're someone who can't track macros because it does cause an unhealthy relationship with food or who just doesn't want to be bothered tracking macros, because to be honest, yeah, it is a little bit time consuming, but if you want to lose weight, this video is for you. And if you're someone who's currently tracking macros and feels a little stuck and wants to learn how to transition away from that, I actually have a full video on how to learn how to eat intuitively. So I definitely recommend checking that video out. I will link that down in the description box below. But if you're someone who, when you track macros, you either start binging or you just feel super restricted and you get competitive with yourself, so you wanna restrict more and more and more, or it just causes any sort of bad behaviors around food, I definitely recommend not tracking macros, obviously, because it's causing a bad relationship with food. And yes, it is less efficient to try to lose fat without tracking macros, but the good news is that you can lose fat without tracking macros. So in this video, I am breaking down the four steps that you need to go through in order to lose weight without doing any sort of tracking numbers. Leave a little comment down below if you prefer tracking your macros or eating intuitively, and without further ado, Let's get into it. So there are three pillars of body composition that you need to understand first. And when I say body composition, I mean specifically body fat percentage because losing weight can mean losing fat and muscle or just losing fat or just losing muscle. If you're trying to lose weight to look leaner, you wanna be focusing on fat loss rather than total weight loss. So if you're trying to improve your body composition, you wanna make sure you're prioritizing fat loss and maintaining as much muscle as possible. So pillar number one is that weight loss comes down to calories in versus calories out in an otherwise healthy person. So basically you need to be eating less than you are consuming. The second thing is that you need to be eating enough protein to maintain your muscle mass. If you drastically decrease your protein while in a calorie deficit, your body will start to burn muscle faster than if you had an adequate protein intake. Number three is that you need to be resistance training in order to maintain your muscle mass as well. If you just go all out in cardio and you're in a deficit, you're going to lose muscle at the same time and you may even end up at a higher body fat percentage. So the big problem that you have to solve when you're trying to lose fat without tracking is how do you know you're actually in a deficit if you're not tracking? These next four steps will help you get there. So step number one does involve tracking, but it doesn't involve any numbers. And that is just to take one to two weeks, I definitely recommend two weeks, at least to track your meal composition. So just as an example, this would mean like for breakfast, I had oatmeal with almond butter that has almond milk and some fruit on top. For lunch, I had a sandwich. And for dinner, I had pasta with meat sauce and veggies. If you feel comfortable to include the portion sizes in there as well, like I don't know about a palm size of chicken or two cups of oatmeal, then that is also a great thing to keep track of. But if that's too much into the numbers for you, then you can just leave that out. And then from there, you're gonna wanna look for patterns, things that are consistent about your diet so that you can start to make changes. So for example, you usually eat two big meals a day and one small meal a day, or you always have oatmeal with the exact same recipe for breakfast. Anything that you can notice is a pattern is worth recognizing and just noting. Step number two is to evaluate your notes that you took while tracking your meal composition and look for things that you can cut out without feeling like you're missing much. So just little things here and there. So if you're regularly consuming liquid calories in the form of soda or juice or even kombucha, those things are really easy to just replace with water. If you regularly add extra cooking oil to things, usually that's something you can actually take out. I didn't learn until recently that you don't need to put oil on things in order to bake vegetables. Yes, sometimes it makes it taste better, but it's not necessary. Or even something like you always put almond butter on your oatmeal. You could probably still enjoy your oatmeal without a tablespoon of almond butter on it. Or if you always sprinkle a tablespoon of hemp seeds on your salad at night. Anything that you know that if you took it out for just a short period of time, not like permanently taking out of your life, you would easily be able to just go about your regular day and not feel restricted, not feel like you were missing a ton from your diet. The next thing to look for is potential low calorie swaps. So if you have pasta regularly, you can swap veggie pasta. If you 
you have toast in the morning, you can have a rice cake instead. If you consume whole milk a lot, you can substitute it for skim milk or almond milk or some other nut milk. If you regularly eat fattier cuts of meat, substituting leaner cuts of meat can make a huge difference in the number of calories. And lastly, if you have sugar regularly, whether it be like maple syrup and a latte or you go to Starbucks and you get a pump of vanilla syrup or any kinds of sugar that you add to things, you can substitute that with a zero calorie sweetener like monk fruit or stevia. Step number three is going to be to use this information to put yourself in a deficit by not only subtracting things but also adding things. So let's start with adding things because that's a lot more fun. You're going to want to start by adding things into your diet that promote satiety. Things like high volume healthy foods like vegetables. Vegetables take up so much room in your stomach and make you feel satiated a lot easier. Also I mentioned protein in the beginning as being important for maintaining muscle mass. If you notice in your log that maybe you're only getting one serving of protein per day, make sure you're adding some protein. Not only is this going to help you maintain muscle mass as you lose weight, but it's also going to help keep you satiated. Protein is extraordinarily satiating. And the last thing to add in is healthy fats. Fats are one of the most satiating foods that you can consume. Just a note though, they are one of the highest calorie foods that you can consume, so don't like go super overboard, but make sure you're not leaving out fats or else you really won't feel satiated and then it's gonna be really hard to stay in a deficit. So overall with your diet, when you're trying to stay in a deficit, you're going to want to focus on whole unprocessed foods because these are so much more satiating. They give your body the micronutrients that they need and it's gonna make it a lot easier for your hunger cues to be more accurately regulated. So if your diet is usually composed of more processed refined foods, then add in a lot more whole foods to your diet and it will just it'll drop you into a deficit pretty darn easily. And then the last thing to add in is activity. I recommend increasing your activity by like one to two hours per week. And I don't mean intense activity. You could just do like one extra gym session and then go for a little bit of extra walk. If you only are hitting about 5,000 steps a day, maybe try to hit 10,000 steps a day. Nothing super intense. So don't go like all out in the gym because that's really just gonna kick your body into a weird mode where it's going to be a lot hungrier, which is not exactly what you want when you're trying to stay in a deficit. So just bumping it up by a little bit, it's going to give your body something to adapt to, but not something that's going to completely change how your body is processing food. Now for the things that you're going to want to remove from your diet. The first things are the things you identified in step two that are the extra little foods that you wouldn't really miss. So cut those out. You can also cut down on portion sizes, anywhere between like five to 20%. You don't want to be in more than like a 20% deficit, so I definitely don't recommend cutting your portion sizes like in half. That is a bad idea. That is a recipe for causing you to feel starved and then binging and completely ruining any progress that you might have. So just cut down your portion sizes just a smidge if you tracked your portion sizes in step one. This is where you also want to make those low calorie food swaps that we talked about. And then also in step one, if you identified that you are a snacker, you just like to snack all the time, you can cut out one or two snack sessions during the day. You also want to cut down on eating out at restaurants. Restaurants tend to add a lot of extra ingredients that really add flavor and make food taste really good, but they also add a lot of extra calories. Additionally, restaurants tend to serve like massive portion sizes, which is just not helpful if you're trying to stay in a deficit. Similarly to adding in whole foods to your diet, cutting out refined processed foods is also going to make this a lot easier for you. Refined and processed foods, especially sugary foods, literally hijack your brain and make you want more and more and more even though your body itself does not need more. So if you reduce those, it actually reduces your cravings for them and makes it easier to avoid the higher calorie processed foods. And this next tip is one that may sound a little bit shocking because I don't usually recommend this for weight loss, but in this context, it actually helps a lot. And that is practicing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, in my opinion, is a health tool, not a weight loss tool, but it does make calorie restriction a lot easier to do if you're not tracking. It makes it easier to do without even being aware that you're in a deficit. And then the last thing for step three isn't really an addition or a subtraction, it's just kind of a change, and that is to change up your exercise modality, especially if you've been in one style of training for an extended period of time. If you change things up without increasing the intensity a ton, because we already talked about that, but just 
change it a little bit, that gives your body something extra to adapt to, and it's going to use calories a lot more effectively to help your body adapt to the training rather than to just store them as fat. For example, if you always train in hypertrophy, when you start this, you might benefit from switching to strength training or switching to a more performance style of training or vice versa. Though I definitely don't recommend switching to cardio, and if you are doing cardio, I recommend switching to a resistance style training because cardio is not the most efficient for long-term fat loss. I have a whole video about that, and I will link that down in the description as well. So with step three, you've gotten yourself into a deficit. Now step four is to cycle in and out of the deficit. What I recommend is spending no more than two weeks in a deficit, and for every two weeks you spend in a deficit, spend at least two weeks at maintenance. So basically just eating intuitively. The longer you spend in a deficit, the more your body starts to adapt to it, and the less of a deficit you'll actually be in. Additionally, the longer you try to stay in a deficit, the more your body will upregulate your hunger signals, making you think you're in a deficit, even though maybe you're actually just at maintenance. For example, if you try to stay in a deficit for four weeks, by the end of the fourth week, you will probably be extraordinarily hungry. And even though you're super hungry, you might be eating at maintenance, but your body's driving extra hunger to compensate for the deficit that you've been in. So you might think, yeah, I'm chilling. I'm still hungry. I must be in a deficit, but that is not the case at all. So purely based on how fast the body usually adapts to things, I recommend spending no more than two weeks in a deficit and then go back to two weeks of eating intuitively. And this is a great time to refer back to your first log that you have of your normal diet so that you can stick to your normal diet so that you know that you're eating approximately what you need to to maintain weight. Since you're not tracking, it would be really easy to go back to maintenance and accidentally overeat a little bit because your body, again, is going to be driving up your hunger signals and so you might just fluctuate back and forth between being in deficit and being in surplus. So definitely refer back to your log to make sure you're eating about at your maintenance. So those are the four steps for how to lose weight without tracking a single macro or calorie. Now I do have a few tips just to help you through this process. Number one is to make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is going to drastically affect your hunger signals. If you are not getting enough sleep, your body actually feels more hungry because it's craving more glucose. So that's gonna make it a lot harder for you to tell if you're actually in a deficit or not. The second tip is to manage your stress levels. Again, stress is going to massively impact how your body metabolizes food. If your stress is off the charts, it's going to make this whole process a lot more difficult. Tip number three is to make sure you are not starving yourself out of fear that you're not putting yourself in enough of a deficit because that will majorly backfire. So if you're feeling like dizzy or lightheaded or you start to have weird mood changes or your stomach starts to feel really weird, like any negative symptoms, not good. A little bit of hunger is normal and expected, but anything beyond that, you're probably not eating enough. My last tip is if you are someone who has a menstrual cycle, you can combine this strategy for eating with the best strategy for dieting with your menstrual cycle. Now, I have a video coming out about that next week. I'm so excited. I've been doing so much research and it's actually incredible. So make sure you stay tuned for that video if you want to learn how to combine this with the best way to diet with your menstrual cycle. And on that note, if you want to see that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post it. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, your neighbors, anyone who might benefit from learning how to lose fat without tracking macros. Leave a little comment down below if you learned anything or if you have any additional tips if you managed to lose weight without tracking macros and I will see you very soon. Bye!